Hi everyone, how are you today? Good? Good, thank you. So, uh, last week we talked about this diversity and speciation starting from the common ancestor, the very first common ancestor called the Luca, whatever. And so, why, why? Why is this? Okay. Uh. So that species. So what you, you notice or not, this is the still bigger skeleton of all the existing and identified. There are tons of unidentified living uh, species out there, like 10 times as many as those who have been identified, but uh, <clears throat> only speaking with only uh, happen to be identified. These are these can be grouped. Uh, it's so annoying. Uh, grouped. Uh, a better thing is uh, still when you uh, review the uh, recorded lecture, the movie, these flickering things uh, doesn't exist. So. If you are kind of annoyed with this, uh, keep looking at this flickering screen, then totally uh, ignore them. And then you just uh, later on, you check with the recorded version uh, at the YouTube. It's not a good, <laughs> not a good alternative option that it looks like. Uh, anyway, so for example, these are all, uh, these two big groups, Bacteria and archaea, these two big groups are, uh, in fact, they are prokaryotes. Uh, these two big groups are prokaryotes who don't even have any nucleus. And then as we, from the perspective of a eukaryote, especially this eukaryote, where are we? Here, in animal area, on the tip of the very tiny little bit of a, uh, and among those uh, Tens of thousands of different animals, we are one of uh, such. Uh, and then, as you can notice, uh, when, whenever you check, there are certain points that serving as, hey, why? It's froze. <laughs> Good, huh? So in this animal, oh, the other thing is, are you still following me? No, it's not, you are not. Okay. Okay. So these animal and fungi, whatever, plants, are probably those three eukaryotic groups that we are kind of familiar with. But there are really many, many big mysteries out there, even in the group of eukaryotes. What's the point? There are so many different, there's so many different living uh, organisms that uh, we are not so familiar with, but they are actually occupying the majority, major part of the uh, whole group. Not to mention all these different, you cannot even pronounce some of them, these different bacteria and what's the archaebacteria to begin with. They are kind of ancient bacteria, so to speak. But uh, another interesting thing is actually these all eukaryotes, including us, are all, look, Follow, go back, trace to find out who was the uh, common ancestor shared with us at this top of the branching point. Who are they? This archae. Archae bacteria are the one actually our, like a, we share the common ancestor. In other words, we evolved from these so-called old ancient bacteria rather than this kind of modern, modernish bacteria, like uh, the those who you are 
more familiar with, like including the E. coli in your guts and others. So that's a fact. So, but <clears throat> actually, main thing is so we talked about the species because all this differentiation and diversification only culminate in like in terms of a recognizable uh, whatever the feature we can only recognize the, the new kind of living organism split from the common ancestor we can only when they establish a new species before you cannot even recognize so in other words we may actually we are uh, silently undergoing a new speciation among ourselves in our human population that is simply just uh, we don't even recognize yet but once we uh, alas recognize that oh there is a new kind among us then so to speak it's too late maybe they are already different from they are different class from us it is possible actually who knows because especially in these days of modern technology uh, it's just a so uh, dizzy uh, advancement of the technology together with these days, such a huge gap, economical gap between classes, it is really, really uh, very, very uh, the ripe, ripe time for such a new human kind can easily develop or evolve from the rest of us later. We will see. Uh, maybe if you are lucky, you can live long enough to uh, actually to witness such a new human speciation coming out of this old existing one in your lifetime. Uh, but <coughs> that died. So this species, so these two, an example of, we are now trying to understand the, the criteria, definition of a, what kind of criteria can we divide, uh, the divide uh, this line between two different species? Here, uh, you have seen already this guy, huh? bald eagle, American bald eagle. Okay? Now we don't really as much respect as before the, to this uh, <coughs> grand looking bald eagle because we have already seen his uh, or her front view uh, the other day. But anyway, this bald eagle, the uh, symbol of America. <laughs> and this is Afri African fish eagle. Can you tell the difference? Looks like exactly, to me, it looks like exactly the bald eagle who simply migrated to, happened to migrate into uh, Africa instead of uh, North America. But, uh, in fact, the, the matter of fact is these are two separate species. They look so alike, but they are two different species. Is that so? What's the point? Point is, hey, what about this? Maybe we don't really care about these two different snail pattern and the, uh, the colors. This face, these faces uh, should be more familiar to you. Uh, these represent all different races. Are they members of uh, all different species? No, they are still among one single species. But to me, they look so much different enough. Much more than those two different eagles, white eagles that we have seen in the previous slide. Then what's the uh, category, what's the criteria? Of, I mean, uh, these, these two beautiful ladies are regarded as a two, uh, representing all independent different uh, races, but included in one single species. And the vice versa is true in the other case. So, what's the standard? 
Just look at these old dogs, different dog breeds. They look so much different. But we, today is very unstable. This whole thing is unstable. I don't know why. But we all know that all these different breeds of dogs actually stemmed from wolf. And artificially, man-made trick generated all these different uh, dog breeds. So the point is here, all these different dog breeds, no matter how different they may, uh, may look, uh, but they are still uh, uh, in the one single species. So is, so is the wolf. Wolf and all different breeds of dogs are actually uh, single, common members of one single species. But on the other hand, the wolf-like coyotes and some different jackal and different uh, types of dogs and uh, wolves, on the other hand, are regarded as a separate, different species. So it's kind of making us a little bit confusing, confused. So how do we decide when we look at when we look at this? I mean, what kind of on basis? Of what we just tell that? Oh, this German, this German Shepherd, uh, is same species as my favorite golden retriever. Where are you? Uh, he's not even in. Here, uh, so that is that is something that I I just made a, just a big gigantic intro introduction intro part, but simply put, uh, it's a biological species concept. It all depends on. What's going on? Why is... Interbreed the world. Whether they can mate each other and then produce a viable offspring is the criteria. If two individuals have no problem, have no problem of marriage, having marriage and produce children, and those children can also produce their own children, then we determine these two individuals, the original the individuals, are among in the same species. So. In other words, two different dog breeds, they may look very, 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 very much different, but still it is doable. At least we can force them uh, to mate to produce another kind of breed, hybrid. Then they are legitimately uh, still the members of the same species. So that's what is called the biological species concept. Yes. So those two eagles, although they may look so alike, but maybe uh, they don't. They don't do such things. They don't mate, and they don't. Do. So very good example is this: the uh, horse and donkey. We all know that horse and donkeys are two separate. Uh, species. But in this occasion, they can mate and then produce some hybrid, which is a mule, right? So what's going on here? But unfortunately, this mule is a sterile. The mule cannot reproduce anymore. Because there is some mechanical difference in their chromosome structure and number. That's why they cannot. They even, no matter how they try, they cannot do this thing. So some of those things, this 
the ability to interbreed. In other words, we can put this thing in, into something like reproductive. Isolation. I gotta tell something about this. Maybe it's because of my stupid computer or what? And other, others should have already complained about these things. Uh, if this thing was the uh, the norm, maybe you are too kind to <laughs> put up with this kind of. <laughs> Uh, BS, but not me. <laughs> I'm very hot tempered. So, uh, so reproductive isolation was the key. So when they split from the common ancestor, they became different. Different over time, from these two group became different, more different, more different, and then at certain threshold, their differences now reach it to the point of like making them reproductively isolated. So they reunited and okay, shall we do this thing again? Okay, just like old days? No, you can't because you look too different. <laughs> I can't. And physically, a lot of times even, they became so much different so physically, it is not even possible. And then now, it is a start. It is a start of new species. Why? Why do you think? Let's just think about it. Why do you think this reproductive isolation is the key of separating two groups? Formerly, these two groups were kind of a mix. All together, they were uh, uh, regarded as a members of a single group. But then. What makes this so-called reproductive isolation uh, is now the start, the first step of the separation as a two new species. What do you think? Once they do this, what happens? If they cannot reproduce between, what happens? I'm a gene guy. Always think about the gene. If they don't reproduce, if, you, they, if they cannot reproduce, that means the gene exchange, their genetic makeup gene cannot be exchanged between these two groups. Within a single group, as long as different individuals can still interbreed, that means, hey, let's say I have a very fancy mutation. I got a very fancy mutation, uh, make me super immune to any kind of germs, including corona or whatever. So I got so excited, okay? Say, if I am still a member of a human, homo sapiens, what do you think? Do you think this, my, the gene, newly obtained gene, can stay only me, inside of me, or is, is it just a matter of time that this gene can, can be transported to somebody else through what? Mating. If I am if I'm still willing to do this thing and produce children, and my gene, this gene, can be passed on to my children, and this reproduction is what, basically? Exchanging my gene. Hey, I will give my half of gene, donate my half of my gene set, and then you do the same. So why don't we just combine this thing together? That's the reproduction, sexual reproduction. So I have my gene, copy of this gene, and my partner have another copy of gene, but unfortunately my partner did not have that such a fancy gene, wonderful gene, but once we marry and then produce offspring, this gene became mixture, so my child get to inherit my portion of this gene. So if you keep doing this, eventually this gene will be spread all over the, this, this population. That's the importance. So as long as this gene flow, we call this as a gene flow.
within a population, as long as this gene flow is permitted, then the individuals of this group cannot be separated into new species. Because one evolution occurred in one single individual, okay, good, good for you, but the gene can be mixed with other groups, so everybody will get it. So there is no, I mean, distinguishable some character. It will be all over eventually. But if somehow I somehow make some kind of a uh, more strict isolation and discrimination so that I can only, like, will be together only a very small group of uh, individual, and then if I just uh, keep this exclusiveness only to ourselves only uh, for long enough time, and at some point now I became I and my offsprings and my just small group will become, will become distinct enough so that now the rest of the other human population cannot even think about like I mean, dare to have this kind of mating because we are too different. Physically, it's impossible. Maybe that's what happened between human and chimpanzee long time ago in, at the beginning of that common ancestral stage. Maybe small group of human, we have some small, uh, wonderful, uh, desirable mutation. We became something very different, distinct. And this difference got developed within that such a small group. And then we became as this. Now, if we look back and then look those, they are far away now. Before in the past, they were much closer. But far away, now in these days, even our physiology became so much different that we cannot even mate with chimpanzee okay, and produce any viable offspring. So that's why chimpanzee is different species than us. So that's the concept. That's the definition and concept and principle of so-called biological species definition, and that is very intuitive, isn't it? We can kind of easily understand. So under the such principle rule, then we can straightforward determine who is with us and who is not. If that individual is capable of this gene exchange through reproduction, then you are still one of us. If you can't, so uh, another example that you can think of is uh, the case of a uh, tiger and a lion. Yeah. In that case, they naturally don't interbreed because their habitat, their env environment has been isolated so for a long time different. So when they meet again, they don't even think about, hey, should we reproduce between? No, they, they just want to eliminate each other. So that's... Naturally, they are, they are kind of an example of such two different species. But then we learned that in the captivity, like in the zoo, if humans force them to do this, this mating, then they are capable of producing a hybrid between tiger and lion. So under this rule of biological species concept, they should be uh, included as the same species. But unfortunately, uh, already, long time ago, traditionally, these two, lion and tiger, has been assigned uh, their independent, separate species, title. So we cannot really go back to, and, and the, uh, understandably so. Because in nature, when they first identified them, they were totally different, they were living, Totally two isolated, separate, different uh, locations. Okay. Unless actually we do this uh, stupid uh, play uh, of uh, effort to forcing them to mate in the captivity, they will never ever. So uh, that's the uh, uh, the example, another example of such uh, biological species concept that 
some of you might actually, hey, what about this? And then that's, uh, we can explain in this way. Okay. So in most of the cases that we, uh, in reality, we have to worry about like drawing the line between two different groups. It works fine, this biological species uh, concept. But uh, on which occasion this biological species concept cannot be applied, you think? There is. There is definitely some occasions, although it is not really common, but uh, especially on, in the animal kingdom, uh, it's not common. But in some occasions, definitely, uh, we cannot apply this concept uh, to determine, distinguish these two individuals. Like if these organisms do not reproduce sexually, there are two different ways of reproduction. One is called the sexual reproduction that you are more familiar with, like male and female. Male produce sperm and female produce eggs, and this fem uh, the sperm and eggs uh, combine together and then restore their, in uh, their individuality entirely. That's what we call the sexual reproduction. But, but we should know that that is not the only way of reproducing. Another, the Quite opposite uh, concept of reproduction we call this asexual, asexual reproduction. You understand this, right? <laughs> asexual, sexual. L. It's simply dividing. It's simply splitting to two. So it's in the case of asexual reproduction, you are simply producing a clone, just like producing identical twin. All of those prokaryotes, bacteria and archibacteria, are simply relying on this asexual reproduction for their reproduction. So basically, they are producing clones, genetically identical offspring. The sexual reproduction's beauty is at each time, because each time we are kind of making a trade. Hey, I have my half. Bring on your half. Then combine this together. So my children, whether it is a son or daughters, genetically speaking, is not going to be 100% identical to me either or to my partner, right? So in that way, we are creating some variation, like just like you are shuffling the cards. In every next time of the playing cards, you shuffle the deck, just like so. That is the basically the way we do during this sexual reproduction. So we greatly enhance this variability by doing so. Okay. But. That is not something that simply increasing the mutation. No. Somebody, someone asked the question about this and the previous this. Uh, this? Uh, is this bothering you or anything? Uh, okay. Maybe I should. I should have actually placed over here. <laughs> uh, so that is something different. This reproduction. While you are producing sperm on an egg, uh, you are generating some this. There is a chance that you are generating some variability. But that's something that we call as a uh, genetic recombination. Recombination means this in Korean. Instead of creating mutation, mutations are you are changing somehow a portion of your DNA sequence gets to change into something else. That's a mutation. But this recombination is not the 
DNA sequence itself has never be changed. It's simply by even though you just shuffle the deck, still the identity of your cult does not change. Just like that. During this recombination, you are simply doing that. Okay. Uh, more uh, correct and more complicated way I can explain the uh, mechanism of recombination, but probably you don't like it, so I will just put it this way. So recombination is simply just like reshuffling, but you don't really change anything. But on the other hand, the mutation, uh, inadvertently, you, even though you didn't want to, but your original, some order of your DNA, uh, is totally uh, mixed up, changed. So that's where ultimate your differences, the variation come from. But simply in this sexual reproduction during the combination between male sperm and female and egg, you are basically doing this recombination. Simply you are increasing the variability, but ultimate the source, you do not create any new source of variation, but simply like those variations appear more pronounced is the effect of the sexual reproduction. So that is actually the reason, key, why some of the organisms uh, spend uh, their valuable resources on this stupid uh, looking sexual reproduction instead of asexual reproduction is very economical, efficient, fast, right? So in terms of Kasong uh, B wise, it's great, but there are certain things that uh, you don't want to this efficiency, but rather you want to uh, uh, you want to have something else like this variability. Through sexual uh, sexual reproduction, you can increase greatly increase individual variation. Unlike asexual reproduction, think of you are uh, like imagine you are the bacteria. Then you will be genetically almost identical here. Even though individually you still have some kind of mutation here and there, but basically, overall, genetically, they are all identical. So probably the, the appearance and the function also very similar. It's very fast in terms of speed and the cost of reproduction is so great. So you wouldn't really, why would you, I mean, want to something else because it's so efficient. But unfortunately, modern nature is not really favorable, favorable to this way of reproduction. Sometimes, a lot of times, because environment changes. Environment changes, then you are doomed or a lot of times because you are genetically identical. So if disaster strikes in this particular location, everybody all together uh, will just uh, experience the same fate, same grave uh, fate, will be all wiped out. But since uh, luckily you are all different through this sexual reproduction, so even if the coronavirus, like a deadly virus, attack us, still some of us have already acquired already. Uh, we didn't know that we already have, but some of you already have those resistance so you are able to uh, leave, uh, even though some other unfortunate ones uh, don't have such a mechanism so that they die. So that's kind of a repetition of how all these organisms with the sexual reproduction have evolved with this variability. That's a very strong weapon. Very expensive. Sexual reproduction is very, very, very expensive. In, you have to uh, invest uh, so much energy cost because you have to first prepare some special cells like a sperm or eggs. It's not easy. It's just simply trying to uh, copy and divide, so, so to speak, regular way of cell division. But in this occasion of uh, preparing some special cells for sexual reproduction, like we call that as the gamete. By the way, 
So I did not put in the slide, but in your uh, lecture handout, they are already in them. Okay. So if you are kind of more, uh, if you want some more, then you can uh, try to read those lecture handout, and then uh, obviously more uh, explanation for the detailed explanation. You have to uh, look them up in the internet or some other reference sources. But uh, if I do so, yeah, there is a literally there isn't any enough time to uh, go over all of these. So probably we will stay here chapter one forever until uh, the midterm. So that's not what I want. So this gamut of uh, such a special uh, specialized cells only involved in this sexual reproduction. Examples of gametes are sperm and eggs. They are genetically something different from other rest of other, so to speak, normal. I, I, normal is the kind of a word that I hate the most because there is no such thing like a normal. Nobody. Nobody is normal. So what do you think the normal? Uh, so regular, something like this regular body cells in terms of a genetic makeup, these gametes, like a sperm and an eggs, are something unique and different. And producing, in producing the gamete, we have to put some special care and efforts. So that sounds like more ex expensive, isn't it? It's very expensive. Produce, prepare, and store gametes. Okay. Even so, we just love to do the sexual reproduction instead of asexual reproduction because of this advantage. Okay. That advantage is very, very critical. When the disaster comes, this variation generated, we, through this sexual reproduction in the population, can save us. It may, it may not be you individually, but it can save us as a species. That's why because of some of us, at least a few, very few of us, will carry, there is a chance they carry some specific combination of the gene that can handle this abrupt change in the environment. That has been always the trend and the way of all those, the big eukaryotes, higher eukaryotes who uh, have decided to Dependent, to be dependent on the, the sexual reproduction. So anyway, uh, I always talk too much. Uh, at this point, so up until now, the kind of uh, the scheme of this lecture has been uh, try to bring up the character of two obvious characters of life. One is diversity, and the other one is unity. And diversity and unity itself, that is a, it's just contradictory, uh, uh, but still every life form carries the two characters at the same time, and the reason why, yeah. Uh, and, and that is the reason why, actually, like when Every different uh, textbook, first chapter, deals with, so, much, so to speak, this uh, common characteristics of life that I mentioned in the first uh, lecture. Common characteristics of life, all, all different life forms have in common. Why, what's the big deal of those things? Why, why, why is it so special that we get so excited? Oh, these are the common characteristics of all this. So what? Why? Because even they are so much different, they are too different like this, still they have some certain common things. That is the point. Why do you have, still have these things in common? Because they don't have to. Because look, Look, they, look at them, they are so different. Even we are the same species of homo sapiens, human, but we all different. But if we uh, expand this concept to all different organisms, including bacteria and plants and the bugs, but still, no matter what, even if you look at them, 
and compare their characters with them with us, then there are certain things like uh, these seven different common characteristics, uh, like complex organization. We have already looked at it. Complex organization in the form of a cell. Okay. Everybody, every different organisms, at least their organization is like based upon the cell. They may uh, have a different strategy or scheme, like whether you are a prokaryote or eukaryotes, like uh, as we have seen in the previous lecture, but still, they are cells. And now to metabolism, in response to external stimuli, homeostasis, what is this? And growth and development, reproduction, and seven. And some other textbooks actually have also different kinds. So instead of seven, they have like six or five as a common characteristics. Or some other textbook have eight different common characteristics as the something like. So that tells you that this is not worth memorizing. Because everybody has a different opinion. So who cares? Fine. Uh, so Instead of trying to, uh, trying to put this thing into your uh, brain forcibly and, okay, so these are seven different common characteristics. Uh, I don't know why I have to memorize this, but I will just, uh, uh, before I take the midterm exam, I will just at least uh, write down in my brain. No, please don't. That is not the point. The point is why? Why these seven? The starting point is we are already different enough. We are already different enough, but even so, why these seven characters still with us? Everybody, everybody cannot dump. None, none of us, including bacteria and plants and uh, uh, whatever, none of us could dump any single, or ignore, any single of these characteristic feature nowadays. And then we want to actually find out why. Why these are still uh, exist, uh, why they still exist as uh, something, to, um, some kind of representative uh, property or characteristics. Wherever we go is the point. And more importantly, are they actually interconnected? It is not something that one dimensional list up of features. They have some cause and, uh, cause and effect uh, kind of a, a relationship. So let's, that's what we are going to take a look at. Okay. Oh, of course, I mean, uh, speaking of some common characteristics. One can say that the reason why we have some common characteristic is something that uh, the feature, the fact that we were all derived from a single common ancestor like a Luca uh, to begin with. So that's why, uh, because we, as a uh, descendant of one particular individual, at least we have still have some kind of resemblance because our genes, we get we got inherited from the exact gene from, so no matter how much mutation we uh, went through uh, during the long period, still we largely maintain the initial original identity. That is uh, another reason. However, this obvious uh, characters is uh, just much more than that. We cannot uh, simply uh, explain, try to explain uh, their existence, the reason for their existence to such a like connectivity uh, through common ancestor. Because, why? Because these seven uh, characteristics are simply very, very much essential to everybody's survivability. If you decide, if you d decide to one minute, just one minute you decide to disregard any of this, then unfortunately, you, your existence in, on, on this planet cannot be guaranteed. That's why. So that's the point. 
And having said that, let's try to take a look at this. First, this whole life we need this complex organization, right? So that's why we always have this something to say, life is a complex organization, which the form of what? We all know that by now. That complex organization we refer, particularly refer to what? Cell. That is the complex organization. Cell is what we call this, whatever the complex organization. And this is the beginning, the starting point of any different life form. Fine. And then now what? Once you have cell, cell, uh, when you try to imagine cell, as I already went over, the, the most obvious thing in cell is this outside the boundary, which we call it as a cell membrane, isn't it? That uh, serves as some kind of a protective boundary, but actually, you better have something very good inside. That is, oh, shut up. Once you have formed the cell, this is something very uh, the, the deep mystery. Every cell wants to achieve this. Ah, uh, just, why is missing over this? Immortality. So every cell wants to live forever. Everybody. I don't know why. Is life is that good? No, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that life is that good to me. But for some reason, everybody wants to live. They don't want to die, at least. Why? Why do you want us to just live forever? It's because of the something that inside of the cell is what I'm trying to say, which is the genes. This is the culprit. Once you have this gene, this gene dictates your urge. And this gene tell. So this is the gene. This is the, 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 the thing that gene wants to exist forever. And because of that, this cell is nothing but simply it's a vehicle. Maybe we just regard this gene as a parasite and this cell, whole entire cell is simply the puppet uh, or the host of this gene. Uh, you can, maybe the identity of genes you may just uh, regard as a DNA, uh, which is uh, in these days, all life forms, every life forms of genes are made of DNA. So let's put this as simple as that. So let's put this as a DNA. Uh, yeah, so genes, these are DNAs, right? But the special thing about this DNA as a gene is they self replication. This DNA is very special in terms of our chemi uh, chemicals is that it is something, the unique, only chemical that can do this, so-called self-replication. They can copy themselves. So that's, that's what uh, uh, enabled the whole cell uh, live forever. The gene, maybe it's gene, so that's, I'm kind of philosophically, I'm saying, Maybe it's the gene that who simply wants to live forever, but genes also uh, realize that in, the, in reality it is not possible. Physically, a gene cannot live forever, like a million or billion years. But gene knows uh, the, uh, the viable alternative option. Hey, why don't I make a copy of myself? Simply put a copy. And once I just put this copy, and the carrier of this my copy of gene will be the cell. I just let this cell divide. So DNA copy and cell division is that the automatic tools of like keep this thing going on and on and forever. If you think that gene as a, you may as an individual, <laughs> uh, sorry to <laughs> say this, but. 
as an individual basis, you may think you have so, such a unique and then independent uh, identity. But if you think about it, you are nothing but simply what uh, your gene dictates. Okay? In other words, if we change your gene, then you can change. So you are nothing but what your genes dictate, your genes planned. So if this genes was the originally uh, the same genes that we had some kind of three billion years ago, nowadays, three billion years after, when we see this gene, these are just simply nothing but the copies of the original things, then what can you say? So these vehicle that carrying this gene are simply the same repetition of a copy of this whole genes through the cell division. So you are nothing but simply keep living these days from the very first day. So don't, don't try too hard to uh, live a longer life because you, have already, you are already living. You have been living forever. And then still you can live another, another maybe next uh, 100 years. As long as what? As long as you produce your children. <laughs> right. So through producing, through reproduction, you are maintaining your existence. That's the uh, objective and that's the function of this reproduction. That's why we have already three things that every living thing, living organism have in common as their common characteristics. Cell as the basic unit. So that's the starting point. So no one cannot do anything about it. And that cell should contain the gene. If this cell does not contain the genes, this thing cannot be achieved. The empty, empty cell membrane not having any gene we can only last something like uh, one hour or a couple of days, depending on physical environment. That will be it. But the beauty is once you are fortunate enough to capture this DNA, original DNA molecule, this DNA molecule will do the magic of reproduction, copying its gene, and then with this copied gene product, play the magic, and then self-division, voila, and so, keep going on. So that's how you are able to live until today. You, through the evolution, you may have changed the form, like from the very ugly Luca, maybe, to this beautiful looking human. It's just you simply changed your clothing, but your gene identity didn't get have any change, alteration. So that's why you have every different living organism have these three characters. They should. If you lost this, any of these things, yeah, you cannot think, any, uh, like a, you cannot think of surviving. So reproduction. But now here is the another very exciting ton of a story. Once you have this reproduction, something inevitably as byproduct occur, which is this. Why? So you keep copying your DNA through DNA replication and then dump this copied version into your next generation, your offspring cells. And your offspring, your sons and daughters will do the same. And their grandchildren will just do the same. So always, before the cell split, you have to double up. You have to uh, replicate your DNA. And then put, if you don't do this DNA replication, what happens? Your two, your two new cells will have a disaster, right? Let's say you have originally, you have 100 genes. If you neglect, you forgot, oh, shit, I forgot. If you forgot copying your 100 gene into 200 temporarily, 
And then how you just get to simply split your 100 into 50-50 into your next generation. So can those two, your offspring survive with only half of the, your gene makeup? You can't. So both of them will die. So this replicating, doubling up, DNA replication is an extremely important thing before the cell division. And then gene never miss. Gene plays take care of this DNA replication. And then, so temporarily double. So one for you, one for you, as in these two new cells inherit exactly copy of the original DNA. And then these two new cells will do the same. That's how we end up starting from the fertilized egg uh, with seven billion different cells of entire one single individual. That's how we ended up. Two cell division. Okay. And so is different individual. But here, why do we, during the course, during such course, we inevitably have this variation. Each different individual will have variation. Why? Try to remember the case of identical. Whether you have these two identical twin or whether it's from a single cell, you have two uh, daughter cell, cell division, exactly the same, uh, same metaphor. Why? What's the source of this variation? Mutation. Thank you. Yes. Mutation will simply occur naturally or spontaneously. Mutation will simply occur. Just like when you try to copy down any big, long sentence on your typewriter, okay, uh, can you be so sure that you will not make any single typo, typographical error mistake? Let's say you are trying to uh, type, copy three billion alphabet, let's say. If you are trying to copy three billion alphabet onto your uh, word processor, how many of you uh, can be 100% confident that you will never ever make any single type mistake? Raise your hand. <laughs> Probably not. Somehow you will make some mistake here and there. That's what happened. That's what happened here in this DNA replication. DNA replication is carried out by some specific special enzyme. That enzyme is an expert in DNA copying things. But that enzyme expert, no matter how, how expert uh, that uh, enzyme is, uh, unfortunately, it also generates mistakes just like a human uh, do. And so some of you may think that, hey, about this, uh, like, in these days, every the word processing program have this kind of spell checker program installed. Can we do this similar thing? Yes, they have already. This enzyme already also equipped with this spell checking pro of uh, the uh, function, uh, functionality. But even so, just like even with our spelling checker program installed, still we generate a mistake, just like mistake happens. Really, mistake happens. And that each single mistake, error, copying error, basically mutation is basically error in copying the DNA during the DNA replication. That's what you can view. And that is actually each of them is a source of a new variation. Some of those errors kind of a known uh, is not affecting any uh, result, maybe. It doesn't really make any difference. Uh, in existing function of the gene, yeah, then you are lucky. But a lot of times, chances are, uh, if you have some kind of a change in DNA sequence in a very especially critical, important gene, then, then chances are that gene's function is going to be uh, disrupted. So in other words, a lot of, that's why our general view uh, about the mutation is so bad. Mutation is a bad thing. Yes, it is true. Mutation is usually uh, does not generate a desirable outcome. 
Usually, usually is a disastrous outcome will be. So those who individual carry this unfortunate mutation uh, will not be able to survive or some other times will have a serious problem in their viability, at least the viability in producing their own offspring. That is actually a very important matter in terms of this evolution. However, very, 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 very rare occasionally, you can also hit the jackpot. So that mutation somehow for tree to tree can very special mutation so that it actually helps a lot greatly uh, the individual carrying this mutation by providing a new function. Although it's very rare, but that happens. So that's how we ended up. At the, the sacrifices of all major majority of all those who failed miserably, unfortunately, in such mutation. But some of you, luckily, obtained very desirable mutation. And then with that, you were able to play some new desirable, good function. So that it increased your like, competitive ability. So this variation is something, once, whatever, regardless, let's forget that things, the functional outcome uh, for the moment. But anyway, this gene's nature, this is kind of a chemical nature of this gene's DNA, will have such an error during their replication because of this, the reason that I have just briefly explained. Yeah? Some scientists are like uh, devoting their entire lives about this mechanism of uh, the making mutation uh, and how to prevent or how to increase those mutations. So that means it is a really, really huge, complex uh, subject. So I will just simply put this. At least I'm not lying. This is a fact. So mutation occur naturally. Yes. So to speak, rather than naturally, it is not good. spontaneously. Spontaneously is probably a better word, mutation. Okay. No matter what you do, if you don't do anything like stupid, still mutation will occur. Of course, if you do, if you attempt a little bit kind of exciting or stupid things like, oh, um, uh, go outside and sunbathing for 24 hours on the, such a strong sunlight or uh, or you just try to leave just like one inch from uh, the uh, nuclear, nuclear uh, power plant uh, that can increase greatly or if you uh, drink literally drink some of the chemical labeled cancer causing chemical yeah of course you will greatly enhance the rate of this alteration, but even without doing anything like that, still mutation will happen. That's the nature of mutation. It's just the spontaneous things, but there are some chemical or physical uh, elements that can increase this rate, so to speak, rate of mutation. Right. So. Uh, this variation is very important now. So thanks to this variation came from originally mutation. Now we are sitting and everybody enjoying their own uniqueness. We are all unique now. Then now there is a room for this. Now this so-called something evolution can play this game on here. Imagine the other way around. What's evolution? Evolution is, have you ever heard something like a, a natural selection? That's kind of basic current uh, co concept or principle of uh, evolution. The mode of uh, evolution. That's how the evolution is being uh, processed, is the developed, the idea developed by originally by Charles Darwin some time ago. So, Natural selection is what? What's natural selection? Nature selects some individual is natural selection. 
nature will spare some of your lives or some of your uh, productivity or efficiency of well being as a surviving as an individual. Uh, on the other hand, some others, some other unfortunate ones, nature does not really support. So in the event, eventually, there will be some kind of differences in terms of uh, competitiveness, survivability. This survivability will be uh, shown in the form of what? How many? How many offspring? How much in the population, in this same location, local population, eventually over a certain time period, maybe 100 or 200 or 1,000 years after, let's start it. Starting point was, uh, was everybody, like here, some kind of 50 or 60 uh, individuals were sitting here, and natural selection played on, and thousand years after, not all of your genes will be passed on to equally, equally to the offspring, sons and daughters, but only a few of you, the so genes will be passed on to. So in terms of both, reproductive, in other words, we are talking about reproductive success. How much? How much of your gene? Like after thousand years, if you count individuals, how many of us like carry the same, inherit the gene from me? Something. Then let's say thousand years after, all 60 individuals were actually descendant. Those who offsprings that carried my gene, and hey, I'm the winner. And in that case, maybe I can establish my, my own individual independent species, just like that, if I am different enough from the rest of the other. So that's how we do. So you may think that this natural selection is always so harsh that uh, it immediately decides, determine you live, you die, or something. No, it's not. This natural selection usually in reality, usually played in this way, it certainly affects this successful one individual based upon the adaptability. Another word adaptability. How much, how well can you adapt to this particular environment? If you are well adapt, if you can adapt very well relatively, uh, comparatively, then you will be able to produce more children. That's the kind of trend. So if you also have a certain inherit that same trait characters so that they are also better adapt to this particular environment than the others. And then they can also, like, they can amplify this uh, reproductive success to eventually all, all will be just uh, your, the individual will be the one carrying your particular gene makeup is the evolution, the concept of evolution through natural selection. Then think about it. What's the What's the relationship between this evolution by natural selection and this variation? Should be so obvious. What? Without this thing, evolution cannot play. So we get to invite evolution. Hey, come on, nature. Could you play this nature, na uh, natural selection over here in this population? But if this population does not have any genetic variation. This variation means genetic variation, which appear outside in the form of different uh, function or different uh, appearances. But ultimately, this is the uh, genetic variation coming from mutation. If there isn't any variation, but simply genetically all these individuals are identical, how would nature 
react to this population. I, either this or that. Simple as that. Everybody leaves or everybody dies. That's it. So it's no fun. There is no such thing like a selection. What do you mean selection? Everybody got selected or everybody got deselected. So that is not what we call natural selection revolution. So that's why this genetic variation is the critical premises okay, for any evolution to occur. Variation is tightly linked to the evolution. If evolution to occur in the population, there must exist already the genetic variation. Maybe it's hidden or not. Once again, yeah, taking this coronavirus example, you may didn't know that whether you already carry these genes that resistant to acquiring this uh, resistant against the coronavirus or not, but once corona attack over here, then now you get to know because some will survive, some will die. Yes. So that's how it has happened in other occasions. That's how this evolution being played. So this, that's why evolution is a part of this whole game on this common characteristic of all life. What about these three? So with this variation, everybody is different. Everybody has their own unique genetic variation. And everybody's uh, mission is what? Under this game, under this game of natural selection, everybody has to cope with, like they have to, is the chance of this reproductive success, or even in some cases survivability. How? How can you achieve such optimization of survivability is the question. Through these three things, at least. At least you have these three checklists. And then do the homework of these three things, then you are eligible. Now, you are eligible for the consider. Everybody is different in terms of their genetic makeup. So everybody is doing their best. But unfortunately, their best is not always the ideal. But still, you do the best. Okay? Under the circumstances. And then the way you do this best is a three thing to make sure that you do the homework for all these three different categories. That's why you have this three thing as a, a common characteristics of life. So all these three things probably uh, we need a little more uh, explanation. So maybe uh, it's not enough time. I, I have only three minutes left before the uh, first break. So I will... Uh, Stop, pause here, and then continue on in the second session. Uh, in between, I will take care of, uh, I will try to go over some of your questions. Uh, but like I said, uh, you, don't, you do not have to stay in here. This is our precious break for 25 minutes break, so you can go out and enjoy your fresh uh, air, whatever, because anyhow, this question and answer uh, will be recorded as part of this thing. So if you are still curious, you can check uh, the lecture recording later. Or uh, once you have enough break and then come back, and then if I still keep talking about then you can uh, be a part of these things. That's how we do it. Okay, so let's take a break of 25 minutes. <laughs>